Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting trigonometric equation with complex numbers or we're going to try to solve it because is this possible at all? You've probably seen the thumbnail, right? Why did it say impossible? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. So this problem is actually pretty interesting because we can approach it from several different angles. Let's go ahead and take a look. I think I'll be presenting at least four methods, so hang in there. Let's start with the first one. So first method, cotangent can be written as cosine over sine, right? So let's write this as cosine z over sine z equals i. By the way, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a bunch of videos on the basics of complex numbers and always ask questions. If you like trigonometry, algebra, number theory, I'm pretty sure you do like one of those at least. Check out my other channel, Cyber Math, Cyber with an S. Now, to be able to solve this problem, we started with a trigonometric identity. And what are we going to do next? Cross multiplication. So now this gives us cosine of z equals i sine of z. And you're like, so what, right? This looks good so far, doesn't it? Now let's go ahead and do this. Put everything on the same side. Cosine z minus i sine z equals zero. And again, this looks normal, right? Well, it looks normal until it isn't. Now, here's how it goes. This reminds me Euler's formula. Do you know it? Well, if you don't, uh, it's definitely you're missing out on a lot. Uh, you should know this formula. e to the power i theta can be written as cosine theta plus i sine theta. And by the way, this gives us the most beautiful equation, which I'm planning to make a video on someday, maybe Monday, <laughs> who knows. Uh, using this equation, we could probably write something as an exponential, but I have a minus sign, that's the issue. But don't worry, we have a solution, okay? And that solution comes from the fact that sine is an odd function and cosine is even. So we can actually go ahead and write this as cosine of negative z, which will be the same thing as cosine of z. Think about it on the unit circle, first and fourth quadrants, right? And then we can write the minus sine z as sine of minus z or sine of negative z, and the problem is solved. Why? Because in this case, if you replace theta with negative z, and yes, theta can be complex, doesn't have to be real, then we get the following. This becomes e to the power i times negative z. Wow, ta-da! We get an exponential. Well, it's good and bad. Why is it good? Because the problem simplifies a great deal. The bad part is exponential equals zero. No way. Even in the complex world, e to the power something can never ever be zero. What is that supposed to mean? Well, let's look further. I think we need to explore this a little bit more and we'll probably come back to this if I don't forget. So let's go ahead and say, take a look at the second method because the first method, maybe we made a mistake, we messed up and something is wrong, right? So let's go ahead and do this. Second method is going to involve trigonometry, but, or a little bit of geometry, but imaginary geometry, okay? Why is it imaginary? Because take a look at it. If this is my angle Z, I know that cotangent z is i. And what is cotangent? It is the adjacent over the opposite. So if this is i, this is 1. So far so good, right? Well, if you use the Pythagorean theorem, it tells you that the hypotenuse, which is uh, maybe we're going to call that w because it's complex, right? Uh, we can write the equation as follows. 1 squared plus i squared is equal to w squared. Wait a minute. Did I tell you i squared equals negative 1? If I didn't, shame on me. Well, I should have told you. i is the square root of negative 1. Again, again, I go over these in um, the lecture videos. But i squared is negative 1. That's something that you should never, ever forget. Okay? Because i is the square root of negative 1. So this is negative 1. What is that supposed to mean? 1 squared is 1. i squared is negative 1. They cancel out. Uh-oh. Bye-bye. Hasta la vista. Now from here, we get w equals 0. That means you have a zero hypotenuse, which means this triangle shrinks and you don't get a triangle. It's nothing. So, and on top of that, there's something that makes it even better, that if you look at the sine of z, 
sine of zero will be one over zero. Uh-oh, you can't do that. Your teacher's always told you, right? Uh-oh, division by zero is not allowed, okay? So, undefined problem, Houston, we have a problem. Can you solve it? Let's go ahead and take a look at it from another angle. Maybe this will shed light on the issue, right? So, what did we get? We got from the, with the first equation, we got cosine z, let me take it from there, equals negative i sine z, right? Now, this is helpful. You know what we're going to do? We're going to go ahead and square both sides, because why not? If you square both sides, I know we'll be introducing extraneous solutions, but don't worry. Let's say we end up with two solutions. We're going to check all of them, right? So far, we didn't find anything meaningful. But if you find something with this, obviously, we're going to go ahead and check it. Now, if you square both sides, you're going to get cosine squared z. And from here, i squared sine squared, right? It's a product, so you have to factor each. You have to square each factor. And as you know, like it came up again, i squared is negative 1. So this is negative sine squared z. Well, so far, so good, right? Can you take the square root? No, don't do that. Instead, add sine squared to both sides, and you're going to get cosine squared z plus sine squared z equals 0. Uh-oh. I don't think that looks good to me because we learned in trigonometry that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1, even for complex angles. So how can 1 equal 0? Well, this is impossible because this is equal to 1. 1 does not equal 0. Proof by contradiction. Whatever you assumed, started with, is false. Wrong. Incorrect. Okay. What is that supposed to mean? Let's look at it from one more angle, okay? And I believe there is a fifth method, which I'm going to not talk about because, which I'm not going to talk about, that's what I meant, because um, I'm going to leave it to you for you to discover, okay? So, this next one can be something like squaring both sides here. Why don't we just do it originally, right? That gives us cotangent squared z equals negative 1. And then cotangent squared z plus 1 equals 0. And again, this might look normal, but cotangent squared plus 1, do you know what it is? It is called secant squared theta. Wait a minute. If you don't know that, you can write cotangent as cosine over sine. Make a common denominator, you'll get the exact same thing. But what is wrong with this? Well, cosecant is what? 1 over sine, right? So if 1 over sine squared is 0, uh-oh, 1 over no number can be 0. Again, this is problematic. So what is going on here? Houston, we have a huge problem. Can you help us solve it? Let's go ahead and take a look at Wolfram Alpha. Or should I tell you? Okay, let's leave it to Wolfram Alpha to give us the answer so we can give it some credit around the poor LLM, right? So, Wolfram Alpha says for this type of equation, ta -da -da -da, no solutions exist. Uh-oh, this equation is impossible. So we're answering the thumbnail question, but don't give it away, okay? So other people can watch it for themselves too. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.